Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Is everybody there? All right, let's speak it together. 543. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and, the sea, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, I want to share something about this word perfect. It means genuine. Everyone say genuine. You shall be genuine. Uh, according to the original character of Christ, you shall be genuine. This is where perfect comes into place. In Leviticus 22. Genuine also has to do with original. Leviticus 22, verse 20. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Whatever has a defect, you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable on your behalf. And whoever offers a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord to fulfill his vow or free will offering from the cattle or the sheep, it must be perfect. In other words, it must be what? Genuine. To be accepted, there shall be no defect in it. Offering must be perfect to be accepted by the Lord. It must be genuine. It's an original state of being. You and I were born again of the Spirit. We are new creations in Christ. There should be a genuineness as a new creation where the old is constantly crucified. And Psalm 101. First four verses. What the Holy Spirit is trying to release is an area where we should be reaching an area of perfection, but genuineness. And there are things that come along with it. In Psalm 101 and verse 1, I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a what? Genuine, Genuine way or a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house in a, with a what? Genuine. Genuine heart, perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A per perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. He will behave perfectly in a genuine, original state of being as a new creation in Christ. Genuineness. In Psalm 19. Hallelujah. I will get to the title here in a minute. Glory. Psalm 19. 
Psalm 19, verse 7. When we hear about the law of the Lord, we also know that it's a representation of the word of the Lord. Amen? Because everything God speaks is law. In verse 7 it says, the law of the Lord is what? Perfect is what? Genuine. It's original. Converting to what? The soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the what? Simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be what? Desired. They are to be more desired there than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. Now, this is powerful. Again, the law of the Lord or the word of the Lord is genuine. It's original. So his word, he talks about his testimony, the commandments, the fear of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord. These are all to be, he said, desired than riches. So in other words... Because these are called perfect desires. Everyone say perfect desires. So what he's trying to do is get us to a place where we are always reaching for the perfect desire. The perfect desire. See, there's a lot of desire out there. But in every circumstance, in every situation, there is a per per perfect desire that's released by the Spirit of the living God who is perfect because it's original. It's genuine. And this is where people get messed up because they allow false desires to mislead them. Now your heart is the core of all what? Desire. So you'll know them by their desires, right? Romans 12. We are to be reaching for the perfect desire in every circumstance and situation. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts or your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Where there is a perfect desire, there is a perfect will. Without a perfect desire, you cannot commit manifest a perfect will. If it's a compromised desire, if it's a flawed desire, it cannot manifest the perfect will of God. Psalm 37. Church always trying to reach that perfect desire in everything we do. Psalm 37. Everybody okay? Verses 3 to 6. Trust in the Lord. Is that a perfect desire? Amen. And do good. Dwell in the land and what? Feed on his faithfulness. These are perfect desires. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because they're his, not yours. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. 
Again, you trust, dwell, feed, delight. These are all perfect desires in the heart, which is the core of all desires. 1 Peter chapter 1. You know, in the songs that we sing, we want to know you more. That's a perfect desire. Hallelujah. First Pete 1 verse 6. Let's speak it. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the what? Genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The genuineness of your faith, no, the, the perfect and original. Not a fake assumption of faith. Not blind faith. This is faith where you hear God and you say, okay. Amen? In Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Matthew 16. Reaching the perfect desire in everything we do. Hey, when you reach the perfect desire, will you reach the perfect choice? Mm-hmm. In verse 24, let's speak it. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone what? Desires to what? Come after me. Is that a good desire? It's a perfect desire. Let him do what? Then I, so there is a place. Let me share this. This is vitally important. And until you begin to master the area of denying yourself, at every circumstance, choice, and decision, trauma, whatever it is, you must begin to master the denial of yourself and let the Spirit lead. Now you can w walk into a perfect desire. You can walk with a perfect heart. Does everybody understand it? And in this, there will be perfect choices made, fulfilling the perfect will of God. Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. He says, so if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. That's a, that's a, we want to reach the master's level of denying ourselves and everything and allowing him to lead. And take up his cross and follow me, he says. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. So saving your life is a poor desire. People don't understand that. You and I don't have a life. It's buried. We have a new life. It's in Christ. We don't need to save our life because it's eternal. It can't be lost unless you choose to walk away from the Lord. Then you're in trouble. Or you break covenant with Him. Amen? Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he said, well, what? Find it. But it's a new life. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death until, 
until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Perfect desire is to come after him, follow him in the perfect desire is to deny yourself. Those are desires. These desires, remember, your heart is the core of all desires. That means if the heart is still entangled in certain areas, it needs to be cut loose. You and I cannot be attached to anything or anyone. These are emotional attachments. But what about my children? They're not yours, they're his. Does anybody understand it? Everything is God's. When you become a believer, everything is his. You and I don't own nothing. We are stewards, even of the children, of the spouses, of everything else. We are stewards. Now that heart must be set forward towards the Lord. And if it's truly set forward to, how about the desire of God's presence? There are people that just don't desire God's presence. They'd rather sit home and read the Bible. And they're missing everything. It's the presence of the Lord that you and I must desire. Because without his presence, we're nothing. And that would be a place where when you get in God's presence, God speaks to you. Sometimes people can't hear God because they're so busy out there. The noise and everything else. Sometimes it's just God's presence. Amen? In James chapter 1. We should all want to reach a perfect desire in everything we do. The, one of the things is people don't even look at their own desires. They won't, they won't monitor their desires. They just do whatever. Well, this feels good. James 1.12. Let's speak it blesses a man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he sh will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. If you love him, will you obey him? Yes. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by God's desires or yours. This means your fleshly desires, selfish desires. That's what draws people away. And then they're enticed. The enemy knows exactly how to play with an individual and cause a desire. He plants a seed of desire. And then he begins to water with that voice. It doesn't, doesn't mean you have a demon. It's a seed of desire. That voice will keep being, that he waters it, waters it. He just walks by, waters it, waters it. And it begins to grow. It says, then when desire has been conceived, it gives birth to what? Sin, which is the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. So own desires. Only God's desire is perfect, not ours. Amen? Hallelujah. James 4. James 4, verse 1. What does it say? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust. Lust is an overwhelming desire, isn't it? But there's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. He says, you lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your carnal desires. He calls them adulterers, adulterers and adulterers. Do you not know that friendship with the world is what? Enemy of God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? 
of enemy of God. Come on, read it with me. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns what? Come on, read it with me. Jealousy, verse 6. But he gives more what? Grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. <laughs> draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Purify your what? Hearts. You double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the, of the Lord, and he will what? Lift you up. Lift you up. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Your desires of self are called flesh. They can never be a perfect desire. They are pleasures of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And by sowing into those desires, you reap corruption. Hebrews 12. Hebrew 12. Don't drift on me. That's the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, Speak it, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly in the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made what? Genuine. Made genuine. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of spirit spark sprinkling that speaks better than the thing of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not es escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if, he if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those that are, that are what? Being shaken. Why? Because they're not genuine. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Let me tell you something. God will always meet needs. But you don't want to make, live a life of just needs. Amen? He's come to bring you life and life abundantly, but you cannot receive that if you're still in the flesh. Amen? You can't receive that if you're still doing your own thing. You can't receive that if you're not consistent, if you're not submissive, if you're not obedient, if you're not cooperating with the Word of God. You can't. The enemy will come and steal everything you've got. He does it well. In Revelation chapter 3, just men are made original. I love it. <laughs> made genuine. God is looking for a genuineness of his people. He wants to know who's really real. He's looking for him in each and every one of us. Revelation 3. Verse 1. Speak it. And to the angel of the church of Insardius write, 
These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. <laughs> Be what? Watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works, what? Genuine. Before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. In other words, I'm going to steal it from you. And you will not know what hour I come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments because they're genuine. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Works were not genuine. In other words, there was another selfish motive behind them. They were carnal. He said they weren't perfect. First John chapter 4. Hallelujah. You know what? There's such a fine line of uh, going back into your life. There's a fine line there. And that's where we have to be careful not to go back into that life. That, that's a boundary. And the Holy Spirit will always warn you you're getting closer to that boundary. Why are you doing this? He'll bring a question to you. Why are you doing this? If you're, if you're really hearing him. If, if you're interested in that true relationship. Because see, when you want a relationship with someone, you have an ear to them all the time. Does everybody understand that? When you truly want a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you invite Him in everything you do. He's the one that leads you to all truth, doesn't He? He's perfect. He's genuine, man. You can't hang around with anybody more genuine than the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of the Father, and He's the expressor of Jesus. He's genuine. And this is what God is looking for right now. There is... So much that people are not genuine. They're pretenders. They're imposters. And they don't even know that they are. Just as they're doing the things that they need to do to call themselves a Christian. But there is no relationship, really. Why? Because they don't have an ear to hear all the time. What are you saying, Pops? What's up, Dad? Show me what to do. I don't want to do this without you. You, he's invited in everything you do. Holy Spirit. Is this my desire or yours? Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. What did I say? James 1, verse 2. Oh, John 4. Sorry. John, 1 John chapter 4. Well, praise God. In verse 12, no one has what? Seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected. In other words, his love becomes what? Genuine in us. By this we know that we, are, we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as a Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been what? Perfected because it's genuine among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no what? Fear in love, but perfect or genuine love casts out fear. 
See, so many people confuse lust with love. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect or genuine in God's love. We love him because he first, what? Loved us. Perfect love is genuine. It's not artificial. It's not lustful. It is real. It's original from God. James chapter 1. The more you get in God's presence, the more you will embrace His love. The more you're saturated with His love. His presence is love. James 1 verse 2. My brethren, call it all miserable. Hallelujah. My brother, call it all what? Joy when you fall into various trials. Hallelujah. We love suffering, right? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let this endurance or patience have its what? Perfect. It's genuine. That you may be what? Genuine. Listen, if you're genuine, he says, you'll be complete and you'll lack nothing. But if you're not genuine, you will not be complete and you will lack. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. Does everybody see that? Why? Because God knows that person is not genuine. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. <laughs> unstable in all of his ways, because he's not genuine, tossed to and fro. This is where we want to reach these perfect desires, where we become what? They're genuine. We want them genuine. We want them to be real. Not a make-believe artificial or hope to be, to be. Amen? And that's where an individual truly knows their identity. Because the Holy Spirit always refreshes an individual's identity when they're genuine. Is everybody okay? Now I'm going to close at 2 Timothy 4. Each perfect desires, which are what? Genuine. Second Timothy four. Verses one through five. Let's speak it. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own, again that word own, fleshly desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers that agree with them. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry or your call. Amen? You know, again, own desires are selfish, fleshly. Amen? We want the perfect desire. The perfect desire of God will bring the perfect will of God. But you have not because you ask not. Lord, I want your perfect desires in everything I do. What is your perfect desire in this circumstance? What, in other words, what's your perfect decision? See, so many people don't ask for it or search for it or don't even consider it. And then they go on what they feel of their own desire. And emotions will mislead you all the time. So we want God's perfect desire in everything we do. Amen? It is vital. We must search these things out. Desire them. If you don't want it, 
then you won't make it. You'll have a life of up and down, in and out, and miserable. Call yourself a Christian. And then you'll blame God for everything. Oh, God never does this for me. No, you don't do things for God. Cooperation is the key. Without cooperation, can't do it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we desire your desire, not our own, Lord. And bring us to a place of conviction when our desire is interrupting yours. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 